lot of luck. You boys and I are going to have to discuss. All right, now it's running good. Now, <coughs> Willie Madison, Mom told me. Yes. What, Ma? Are you me Y'all sort of? Why? Yeah, well, Oscar Vida. Okay, Ma told me, all right, that that the father went to uh, that his father went to Louisiana, and Willie went with him for a time. He came to visit his grandmother, Sella Hughes, who was in Arkansas, to plow for her. This is Willie Madison. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know him about that. It said that uh, his grandmother's name was Acela Hughes. Did he ever talk about his uh, no, his no, uh, no. his uh, parents or anything? No. Now that you can do after we eat, I need right. you. Yeah. And that he's buried at uh, Holly Grove Baptist Church. That's right. Yeah. Eudora, Arkansas. That's but that she didn't have the date. She did. Yeah, and I that, don't know the date. Uh, yeah, yeah. And that uh, he has a brother who's still living in uh, Eudora. Who? Oh, Willie uh, Madison. Uh-uh. No? Now, that's what she told me, and that was back in 79, though. No. He, uh, Mama and Willie Madison were sister and brother. There were only just two of them. Okay. There's only two of boy and good. No, there was only just two of them. No, she got, she got crossed up there. But only just two of them, her and Willie, and she was the oldest. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Her father's name was Willie Madison. Her father's name was. Now what, did she have a brother too? Uh, Mama had a brother named Willie Madison. Okay. Okay. Okay, then her father's name was Willie Madison. Was also uh, Willie, Madison. Willie Madison, right. and that uh, he was born in uh, 1868 right. uh, in uh, Davenport, Louisiana. I don't know where he was going. Probably was, yeah. Probably was. Okay, but you remember his uh, funeral, though, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I remember mean, his funeral, but I don't know what year it was in. So where were you working at then? Well, I used to work construction. I went on so many different jobs. I don't know what job I was on. But I don't know exactly what year it was in. But mother came down there. And okay, so mom was He was in there. It had to be in the early 70s. It had to, but what year, I don't know. It had to be in the 70s, but what year, I don't know. Okay, so what can you tell me about him? About him? So what was he like? Mm -hmm. Willie Madison? Yeah. Oh, he's my dad. Okay. Uh-huh, because I don't know nothing about him. Well, okay. Now, as far as I can know about him, what he used to do, he used to always like to break horses. He had a little farm, like, out in the country. Mm -hmm. See, what he, what he used to do, him and Grandma Kate, he didn't stay there too much. What he would do, he would stay out to his little farm out there. Then on the weekends and Saturdays and days like that, that he would come to town. But for him staying there, I never know him to stay there. But right by Cow Hill, right by his house, he had about two acres of land there. He used to farm right. that too. But for him staying there, I never know him to stay there. I rest back remember when he stayed there, but I never remember him staying there. So how did he get this farm? The wagon. He, he, he always had mules. He had, what well, he had, some young mules. Oh, yeah. Grandpa always had young, young mules. mules. Willie Madison? Yeah. yeah, he used to break them. Yeah. Break them. Yeah. He'd break them and then he'd set them in the white poles and he'd keep young ones himself. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's where he'd go back and forth to the farm on his way. Mm -hmm. So where did he live now? Did he live outside of yeah, well, well, your door? Well, he, I never know him to live with Grandma Kate. He always lived out there. He lived with, he lived with Grandma Kate, but uh, at a while he left and went and lived out on the farm. See, yeah. he was too small. But I remember when he was, I never know him to stay there. Yeah, he stayed there, you yeah. stayed there, yeah. But all what, I what was Kate's? <coughs> okay, wait a minute. Now, his wife's name was Kate. Yeah. Was Kate Frazier. Madison. 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 Well, well yeah. Frazier was her maiden name. Frazier was her wanted, maiden name. That's what we wanted to know over there. Frazier yeah. was her maiden name. Yeah, that woman actually did. We didn't know. We didn't know. So, uh, big deal. Keep, keep going. This film is okay. money. So, so... So he raised horses, right? Yeah, he used to raise them. He used to break them young Frazier. horses and sell them. We used to raise holes and stuff like that and bring them to town and sell them. How did, hey, Jim, how did he get the farm? 
I can call Paul. And what do his phone? Uh -huh. He drives away. Well, oh, okay, I'm saying, how did he purchase his farm? I, I mean, like, did he uh, buy the land? Did he no, rent the, the land? land with, with the house with the head in town, they owned it there. But the land out there, it belongs to some white guy or other. He used to let him just farm it. He let him just farm it. But he didn't own that land out there. Well, he was five or six miles from town. Might have been further than that. But see, he didn't own that land, and he used to raise all the stuff out there. So that's how he made a living? That's how he made a living, right. But see, Grandma, what she done, she would have picked cotton and chopped cotton, you know, in the, in the, the season, mm -hmm. and she raised a bunch of chickens. I remember that she had a big old uh, dumb old red and red chicken, mm -hmm. and she would sell eggs and fries and stuff like that. Okay. So what kind of man was he? So who did he look like, you know, so what would he like? Well, he said he looked like me, for as, as far as I can remember. Because why would he look like me? Remember all of them used to say him. He looked like me. He was about five foot eleven, or maybe six foot, slender bit. He wasn't heavy as I am, because I wasn't as heavy either until the last four or five years. I guess he weighed about 165 or 70 or something like that. Mm -hmm. so he's a nice fellow, as far as I know of. Mm -hmm. So was he happy? I mean, you know, like, did he have a sense of humor? Or? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, a good sense of humor. Well, he was happy with what he was doing. What he really liked it is what he was doing, horses. You know, mules and breaking horses and mules and stuff. That's what he liked. But for as him staying there, uh, I rest say he stay with a grandma cake, but I don't never remember that. But every time I know that we stayed out in the country. But he was he was a nice guy. He was happy for as I knew of. He was real nice. So did you uh, ever go out there with the farm? No. And watch him break these horses? No, I never go out there. No, no. I never go out there. I went out there and saw him farming, not yeah. break horses. I saw him working in the field. I, I never went out there. Yeah. So who do you think he looked like? Who? Who? Who, Grandpa? Yeah. They is. Yeah, they say he looked like me, that's what I told him. They is. He ain't tall as him, that's the only difference. Yeah. But I was, I'm a little heavy, he was. He talked, he talked like him too. Well, he, he wasn't quite he heavy. Was a little, he was a little heavy, he was thinner and yeah. taller. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, they, the same thing, but he just, uh, Grandpa was thinner and taller. So, yeah. like, did he ever take y'all any place or what? Well, he was busy I and stuff. He uh, 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 not taking us any place. He was busy working, raising hogs and this and that. Cause we, we didn't actually live with him. See, because we lived way out on the farm somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, so, as soon as the First World War came, did he join the Army or anything, or what? Not that I know. No, not that I know. Mm. Okay, but, uh, mm. so what did he die of? The, the horses horse, run off, yeah. and uh, he was raking hay, and he always trained these young horses. They were mules, they were spry, you know, and he never hit a mule, he just shaked the lines a little bit. and. He's getting up on the hay rake, you know, the old type hay rake, they rake it and, you know, uh, up and by hand, it's by hand. And his hand slipped off of the post on the hay rake that hold the lines that, for the mule, and his hands hit the lines, and the mule took off. Took off yeah. That was a signal for the takeoff, because if he wanted to move a little bit, he'd shake it just a little bit, they'll move a little. He wanted to move faster, he, he, you know, It'll move faster by how he shake the lines. And they, they run off and kill him and, and broke his neck. Run off and broke his neck. So what, while he was hanging on to the lines or what? So well, he got caught in the rake, I think. that Because uh, the hay rake is a lot of forks, you know, and, and uh, picks up the hay, you know, a lot of forks. Yeah, when he gets so much in it, thing, it you just dump up, it up. He, he reach and get a thing and dump up, it'll dump up a pile of hay. Then you go and get another pile and dump it up. Yeah. Then when you get it all rolled up in piles, then you get a what, hay baler, mm -hmm. then you bale it up. The hay baler come down yeah. the side. Or sometimes if not, you put it in a haystack. Yeah. If you don't bale it, then you put a stack and pile way up around a post called a haystack. So the mules wound up killing him. Yeah, yeah, that's, what yeah he, that's what killed him. Broke his neck. Young mules. Yeah, well, I'm sure. He was 76 years old when that happened. Oh, okay, so he was 76. Mm-hmm. What year was that in? I don't know. I was, was in a TV hospital, so it's 1953. 63? 53. Is that far back? I thought it was in mm -hmm. the 70s. No. Uh, the 70s, the old man died, John Lewis. Yeah, yeah. But uh, he, that was 1953, because Mama come out to the hospital to, to take me out 
take me home, the doctor would let me go because I was in yeah. TV. But she came down and me and her was there. Right. Yeah, she came yeah. down there. I, I the doctor wouldn't let me go. That's a 53, because mm -hmm. she came down there. Because mm -hmm. <coughs> me and her was there. Right. Because I was in it, because I came out of the hospital, because I was in hospital 52 from, I think around October 52. And then this was in the summertime of 53. I was still in the hospital, and the doctor said, no, I will not let him go. The mama said, I'll, I'll pay your way and everything, but the doctor said no, so uh, she went on down by herself. Because mm -hmm. you know. I met her over there. Right. Uh, so what about his grave? So who is he buried with? Is anybody, is there a family plot there, or what? No. No. no I, old I, Holly Grove was just, you every member of people, they just bury him out there in the, by the church, you know, the routine. Is there a marker on the grave? I don't or what? know that. I doubt it, because I don't know whether Mama bought a marker or not, but I doubt it. Back in them times, they didn't put no markers on no. that much. Not a few people did. Yeah, right. Not a few. Well, do you know the spot where he's buried? I never seen it. I know. But you went to the funeral, I, though, right? I went. No, he I went. Oh, okay, I know so about went. where it is. I know exactly. I don't know. I know about where it okay, is. Okay, so tell me where it is. Okay, it's about. Give me something to draw on. Right there. Oh no, no, no. Oh no, uh, oh no, there, there, there. Okay. They got the highway comes down through like this. That, that's that old highway. Remember that old highway? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the highway curves around like this. Okay. Right along in here, somewhere, is on around that curve, is a church. Not too big a church. Not too big. Yeah. Old Holly Grove. Yeah. This would be the front, the steps and stuff right mm -hmm. in here. Here be windows. Windows. Windows for another stick. I don't think it was no window in the back. I think it was two windows on each side for another mistake. I don't remember check. All this over in here, but I see about 20 feet off. All this is, is graveyard, all in here. Mm -hmm. All this over in here. It's pretty good size graveyard, and this is the highway going along in here. Mm -hmm. Like that. Okay. And that grave is not very far from that church. They, they had one row of graves. I would say along in here, it's about that second row, by the middle ways, by the center ways that check. It's somewhere right in this area, right along in here. Because I really got remember that so well, because a, a lady, what was the lady that lady stabbed that I expected to kill a long time ago when we stayed out in the country? I heard about it, I didn't know her name. You, you remember, okay, that, that's the way, that's where I, that's, that, that's, I get it. that's the way I remembered where it was. Because see, the Shalana Graves, well, her was in that first line, mm -hmm. and right opposite of that, going back towards that, it was the grandpa's, right along here. Because when I see it, because when I see it, mama the one said it, that's who, who gave it was. Yeah. Uh, that lady stabbed with ice pick. I can't think of it, it been years ago. Mm -hmm. But, but, because I, because I asked mama, what's that the name? I remember that name then. Yeah. And, and his grave was right off on the side of it. In other words, it's just about the center where that church is. Yeah, right? yeah. It's, about, it's about the second row. Because the, the roads kind of run something like this. The graves kind of big something like this. Uh, but just put grandpa and point toward that one. Might well cut it off till your visit over. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, it's Bobby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's and the Paul? Somewhere about like that. No, just cut it off. So how's this being along right now? So how's the very full part out in that area? Yeah. Okay. Because it's out in the country. Okay. So. I don't remember. But if you don't know if anybody else is out there, Barry, they're from the Lewis's or... No. Or not the that, Madison's or anybody. Not that I know of, no. Okay. So, uh... But he never talked about... His mother and father. No. Uh -uh. Let me see if I have. Okay, he, what I? Yeah, go ahead. He, he, he was a guy, he never did talk very much. He was no kind of on the quiet side, but he never mentioned anything about his family. Ne never did. Okay. Because I picked up from the census that his father, let's see here. No, that's Willie Madison. Yeah, that his father's name was Charles Frazier. Charles Frazier, I never heard that name. Th no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, no, uh, oh no, uh, that's Kate. 
Lonnie Madison, Sally Hughes. No, I don't have anything. On his father. On his father. You know, I never, you know, I never heard him mention a thing about any of his people. You know, as a funny thing, I never have. I guess by we being so young, and he, was, I guess we never talked about us after that yet. But Ross said he was born in Louisiana. He was born in uh, Louisiana, buried at Holly Grove. He had a brother still living in his dorm. Says father went to Louisiana. Willie went with him for a time. Came to visit his grandmother. Sella Hughes in Arkansas to plow for her. Came to visit his grandmother, Sella Hughes. Okay. Sella Hughes was either his mother or was either his uh, grandmother. Mom said that that was his grandmother, Sella Hughes. That was his grandmother. Mm-hmm. He never said anything? No. I, I, about? No, he, he never mentioned anything about it. I, I never talked with him about it in his people. I guess maybe because I was so small, I guess, the reason. I never heard him, you know, mention anything about his people. Okay, the name of Priscilla Hughes doesn't ring any bells? Or? I, I never heard them name. Okay, because Sella Hughes, as she was born, in, uh, eight, be, 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 between 1868 and 1873, in Arkansas, and I did find some information on, on uh, her. Her father's name was uh, Charles Hughes, and her mother's name was Frances. And this Charles Hughes was born in 1829 in uh, Virginia, and Frances was born in 1833 in about Arkansas. What part of Arkansas? I, I, I just have Arkansas. Arkansas. Just have Arkansas. And I picked that up from the uh, National from the uh, from the National uh, Archives uh -huh. from uh, from Washington, so. But uh, I wasn't able to get too much from her on his father. No, I just wouldn't be. I just wouldn't able to get anything. Okay, well, what can you tell me about Kate? About Kate uh, Frazier? Kate, Kate Madison. Yeah. Uh, well. <coughs> <coughs> Yep. Yeah, yeah. Now, Kate Frazier was her maiden name. Yeah, well, I had she was born January thirty first, eighteen eighty one, in Arkansas. Kate, uh, Kate uh, Madison, and her maiden name was uh, Frazier. Her maiden name was Frazier. So, what can you tell me about her? Well, only thing, only thing I remember about her is she, she lived. What, what, only thing I remember about her when she was living, well, I guess you call it in town. It was, a, in other words, their house was the First black house, you know, the white folks live in town, mm -hmm. and the black people live, you know, by the sawmill. It was a sawmill across the street, and right across from the sawmill was uh, her brother's house, Willie Madison. That was a brother. He came up here once or twice. You might never met him. That was uh, Mary Lewis's brother, Willie Madison. You know what Okay, I mean? yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He came up here once or twice. That was a br that was the only brother she had, and so it a highway divided them. And so she stayed on one side, and he stayed on the other. And right on the corner where you go right down the hill, that's where Kate and uh, uh, her daddy stayed. Willie Mouse, an old man. That's where he stayed at. But he never did. I never. Well, I say he stayed alone years ago, but I never remember him staying there. I remember her staying there, but not him. I never remember him staying there. I know he used to be there, you know, like on a set or something like that when he come to town. But as far as him staying, me knowing him, staying, I never know to stay there. Cause see, we stayed out in the country about seven miles from there, and I never know them to stay there. Okay, now Kate Frazier was Willie Madison's wife. Right. Okay. The, now the old man. Okay, right. Okay, <coughs> the old man. Now she had a brother also named Willie Madison. No, Willie Madison was Mama's brother. Ah, uh, okay, so that's Willie Madison Jr. Junior, okay. Right. That's Mama's brother. That's the only brother. Oh, it was just only two of them. Okay. That was Mama's brother, Willie Madison. Oh, okay. Willie Madison Jr. Cause see, he came up here. To, to, right. He came okay. up here once, once or twice or something like that. Okay. Cause see, that was Mama's brother. It was just only two of them. Okay. And he came up here to see her. Okay. Well, and I got my stuff. Okay. Let me see what I got here. See, on Willie the table. Madison Jr. That's Mama's brother, and Willie Madison. That's her father. Okay. So, all right. That's all, it was only two of them. 
Okay. Well, yes, there was only two of them. Okay. Cause I don't know what year he died, but when he died, I came to the funeral too. But I'm not good with the years. But when he died, cause I used to come to Utah all the time, and I used to go to the house to see them. And that, oh, that never too awful long ago. But uh, he died too. Then when he died, I, I never go back up there anymore. Okay, William Ellison Jr., I had his birthday as of February 5th, 1905. Yeah, mama was older than he was. I don't know how much, she's a little older than him. I don't know how much, but that, that's mm -hmm. not about right, because she's older than he was. Mm hmm okay. Now, on Kate Frank, uh, so what kind of person was she? Who? So how did they meet? Did they ever tell you how they met? No. Tell you, I'd be lying. I really don't know. Yeah, so, don't what know. kind of person was she then? Who Kate Madison? Mm -hmm. Well, first I knew her. She was all right, but she's kind of on the mean side. Yeah, she, yeah, she was on the mean side. But I remember we used to go to town, and I we would stop by a house, and uh, she was really mean. And she had a bunch of chickens. I never forget the long I lived. She had a bunch of dumb and chickens, chicken, a big old, big old Rhode Island, big old chicken. And she had a bunch of hen, uh, hen uh, nests all down the side and lines. And I used to go out there and pick the eggs, gather the eggs. I was small. I'd go out there and gather the eggs for her. And she'd give me a nickel to gather the eggs. And a nickel was a lot of money back in them times. Mm -hmm. But for her, she didn't give you any money. No, and she was tight as beeswax. But she was she treated us nice. You know, she was really mean to us and everything like that. But uh, she was mean to him, though. To her husband. Mm -hmm. Or the old man, wasn't it? She was mean. Oh, Lord, she was a pistol. I remember one time, it's one Christmas, I never forget that. We had went to town and mama stopped by there and she had cooked a cake. And I, and I, and I never forget that. And he, I always remember that too. And he had came in the house for summer, he finna go back out in the country. And uh, he wanted a piece of that cake. He liked the sweets. And I guess why I got to I like sweets. And he asked me, could, uh, could, I, uh, could I have a piece of cake, cake? No! And he got him a biscuit and put some sugar. I, I rest remember that. Put some sugar. Then he got in his wagon went on over. And she wouldn't even give him a piece of cake. Well, she was mean. Yeah, she was mean. And and, and, that, and I thought about that a minute day. I said, one of these days, if I get grown, my wife cook a cake, won't give me a piece of cake, I'm going to kick the whole table over. <laughs> well, well, she was just that way. For what reason, I don't know. Because what he would do, he would raise hogs. And them young horses, he'd, he'd raise them up and he'd break them. He'd break them himself. And then he'd sell them to the white people. And when he'd sell them hogs or something, he'd raise some big old long hogs. He'd put them in a pen and fatten them and raise them. When he'd do that, you know what he'd do? He'd go give her all the money. All the money. I didn't say some of the money, all the money. He might buy a couple of packs of tobacco out of it, you know, chewing tobacco. Because mother used to tobacco too. I guess that's what she got it from. And that's all he would get out of this money. But she was mean. And she kept all the money. Because I remember... I used to go back up there in the 70s, and uh, she was getting pretty old then. And I, uh, you know, I used to drink back in them times. And I said, "Hey, Kate, if people come by in trucks and carry to chop cotton, and I said you shouldn't be chopping cotton. You too old. You ain't got to do that." And boy, what I would say that for? Her. She wanted to make money and didn't want to spend anything. She was just tight like that. But I don't know. I'm tight, but I ain't that tight. I, I don't believe in that. I believe in if I got the money to buy us, so I don't mean going over boat. Mm -hmm. Don't don't solve this here. Mm -hmm. So she, did you ever go out to see him when you were small then? When I was small? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we stopped out to see him. Yeah, we stopped out to see him, yeah. We stopped mm -hmm. by there. Then as I got grown and I left him with the text. I used to come up there. I used to come stay all night with him up there. I was about 19, 18, 19, 20 years old then. I used to come up there stay all night with him. Because when I left there, I had a, I messed a girl up. Up there knocking so. See, I was 17, I was getting around. See, he wasn't doing nothing, he was just a punk. <laughs> and, uh, and so when I left there, the, her name was Dr. Knight, she died, I sure hated that. And so I used to go up there to see her, you know. But well, she had got married and had a husband, but I never messed with her thing, that's good, no, she as a friend. Then I had another one I used to tag on up there. I had, I had two babies up there. I used, to, I used to be kind of rough. And I would go to the Ferris, I used to go there and see her. And then she left and came up to Chicago or somewhere. But uh, back in them times, things were not like it is now, but the older people, if you mess up the daughter, because I asked her to marry her, but she didn't want to leave from around her mama. 
Ask you come go with me. I said, I got a job. You come go with me. We'll get married. So we'll get married here. Mm -hmm. Then I just carry you with me. Because I had a call. Mm -hmm. And she, the mama didn't want her to go. And she said, well, her older sister, Vashti, she had left home, see. And she was the only one. And the brother, he had left. Uh, what was his name? Skates Knighton. Well, he had left the town long with John Evans. My oldest brother had left. Mm -hmm. So they had volunteered and went to the service, see. Mm -hmm. There wasn't nobody left but her mama and daddy. And see, her mama, her daddy working on a boat. Over by Green, you know, Green Mississippi, you heard of Green Mississippi? Mm -hmm. He worked on a boat up and down the river there. And wasn't nobody being home but just the mother. And that's why she didn't want to leave. I said, but she, she gonna have a baby or let her come go. And I married, I married her before we leave. Then I take her with me, I take care. But she didn't want to leave her mama. And I said, well, I'm going on back. And I went on back and I met another lady. But I always liked it though, but, but she didn't want to leave. Well, I guess she was right in a way. Her mama would be there by herself, you know what I mean, but mm -hmm. but I wish she'd have went. But, so what else can you tell me about Kate Frazier, you know what? I mean, who? Kate. Kate, uh, Kate, uh, Kate uh, Madison. Kate Madison? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh -huh. <coughs> what did she do what? So is there anything else you can tell me about her, you know? No, no. So how she looked, you know? Oh, she was a kind of small lady. She was kind of, well, she wasn't dark skinny. She was kind of light skinny. She, well, she wasn't quite big as your mother. She might have been the size of your mother. But her face was more kind of a keener like, you kind of bright, she brown skin. But it was, she, she was nice in a way, but she was mean though. She oh Lord, mean. yeah, she was mean. She was yeah, mean. but she wouldn't dog you out, you know, around or anything like that. But if she tell you something, you better do it. But she was, she just mean or just a mean type person. But she wasn't really what you call mean to us. But she was a grandpa though. She was mean to him. Oh Lord, yeah, she was mean to him. Yeah. Uh, okay, I, I found in the census. Her father's name was Charles Frazier. Charles Frazier, I never heard of him. Charles Frazier, and he was born about 1830 in South Carolina. South Carolina. And the mother's name was was, was listed as uh, uh, Matida, M-A-T-I-E-D-A, -E and she was born about 1845 in Georgia. In Georgia. I found that on the census. For sure now? I found that on the census, and uh, it listed so, but that's as far back as I have. That's the only thing that I have on it. But okay, in North Carolina, South Carolina. Uh, her father, South Carolina. South Carolina. That's where the geeks is at. That's where they get a fun accent talk from, I imagine. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So what you talking about? Explain that to me. You know. Well, what I'm trying to say, we well, see he talked in front of my grandpa. He talked kind of funny. He had a funny kind of accent. Well, you see, I don't talk like no one in there or spook myself, you see. Okay, so what? And it must have been some kind of geeches or some 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 relation or something like that back in the times. That's what I'm saying. Is that like a dialect or what? Well, it's something like they call a Frenchman down in Louisiana. Uh -huh. Cause there's a different accent of people. It talks different. That, that's, that's what I'm thinking. Since, since you said, so I didn't know all that. But I know the speech was different some kind of way, but what other way I did, what, the reason why I didn't know. But I didn't really know, you know, where the people come from and nothing about them. Okay. Is there any particular words that you remember that they said that was some no, of the they, they all they... talk, well, okay, he talked real fast, but she didn't talk fast like him, but he talked the real fast. If you didn't really follow up on what he was saying, he talked so fast you could understand him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he talked mm -hmm. the real fast. Yeah, mm -hmm. but not with no heavy voice, but a kind of a light voice, but he, I mean, real fast talk. Yeah, mm -hmm. he really talked mm -hmm. it fast. Uh, my uh, grandmother, on my mother's side, they called, uh, they called uh, baby chicks uh, biddies. Biddies? Uh-huh, biddies. They called it, yeah, bitty, 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 biddies. Where were they from? Well, I was just wondering, you know, what they call them down in Arkansas. What? The you know, the little really, uh, the young chickens. They call them bitties, yeah. Bitties. Yeah. yeah they call them bitties, right. Well, I would have called him everywhere as far as I knew of him. Mm. But by him being from, the, the, one of them from Louisiana and one of them from South Carolina, but it could have been a Frenchman, it could have been a Geechee. But see, down in Louisiana, most people down there had a Creek, they call it Creole, but they were French, which they were one of the two. What part of Louisiana you said it was? Well, I didn't make a lot of places in Louisiana. In a whole lot of places. Uh, Thank. Cause I go all the way to Louisiana when I go to, to the Texas, in the northern part for sure. 
Davenport, Louisiana. Davenport. Yeah, but let's see. Father went to Louisiana. Willie went with him for a time. Came to visit his grandmother, Sella Hughes, in Arkansas to plow for her one spring. Hmm. Father went to Louisiana. He didn't say what part, though, huh? Mm -hmm. Willie went with him for a while. See, cause, see, cause I don't know who she meant by father. And Willie went with him for a while, came to visit his grandmother, Sella Hughes. But she definitely mentioned Sella Hughes. Sella Hughes, yes. Sella Hughes in Arkansas to plow for her one spring. Buried at Holly Grove Baptist Church, Eudora, Arkansas. Has a, bro has a brother still living in Eudora. At Willie Madison. Hmm. Let's see here. What else? Okay. So now you don't know uh, a whole lot about John Lewis. No. I see because John, yeah, I see because they were divorced. I knew he had a brother lived in St. Louis named Candace. I used to him talk about it all the time. I was young. I, but I never, I never see Candy, but I used to hear Mama talk about Candy, and he was something like a, he, what they call a sweet back back in them time. So what's he, he was a, a, you know, woman's man, sweet okay. back, you know, he, yeah, back in them time they called him a sweet back. Yes, yeah, so he was a nice looking, uh, you know, nice looking guy, and he was a sweet back. Okay, let me see. Yeah, he, so he lived in St. Louis. Okay. St. Louis, Missouri. Okay, Peter Lewis was John Lewis's father. I never did. He, no, he, he, and Peter's father was Joe Lewis. Peter's father was Joe, Joe Lewis. I never heard of him either. Joe Lewis. Now, let me see here. I want to look at Mary Hampton. Mary Hampton. Mary Hampton was Peter Lewis's mother. Or was uh, Peter Lewis's wife? Mary Hampton was John Lewis's mother. What can you tell me about Mary? Well, we used to stay in the country, and okay, it was it was five boys and two girls, and we stayed on the farm, and so we always. From when, when I can remember, about seven or eight years old for sure, we always would chop cotton, pick cotton, and all that kind of stuff. And what we would do, when we get through with our crop, we'd go over to the white guy and do pick cotton and chop cotton or whatever. Then that's the money we would get for our school clothes. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Okay. But see, school ain't what like it is now. School out in the country, we went to a country school. School never would start till all the people got all their cotton and corn in. Then school would start. But she didn't have no set time, like you said, September school start. Mm -hmm. well, well, it wouldn't. If somebody wasn't through getting their crop and stuff in, everybody around would go and help them, then maybe a couple of weeks then school would start. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's where we went to school. So when we went to school, we had to walk to school. We didn't have no buses. We walked about seven miles down through the woods in the mud. And we, and when you said mud, it was mud, because it was a trail for wagons thing to go in. But we made it. We didn't have no welfare, we didn't have no food stamps, and let us never go to jail for Very clever, Jesse Lee. Come on now. We all got to go to hell. Okay, so, oh, y'all work out in the field, y'all yeah, didn't go to school until after you finished working in the that, field, right. after you went to get everybody's cutting in. You got me in on it? Yeah. Great, and then y'all went to school. That's right. All right, so now y'all had to work out in the field in order to get your stuff. That's right. Uh, did he ever do any work? Yeah, he chopped cotton, picked cotton too, everybody. Yeah. Everybody have a family way. And when you were small, you got on the road with one older than you. When you got big enough, you got a road by yourself. Everybody chopped cotton pick cotton. Mm -hmm. He, he yeah, wasn't yeah. much of a cotton picker because he always was kind of little on the sickly side. But see, we'd be chopping cotton and he couldn't keep up. And we just kind of 
cut a few notches on his four or five foot, let him catch up with us, so he never was very much of a wicked. And he couldn't pick cotton. I picked two or three hundred, if he get a hundred or something, he thought he'd have done himself. But he never was much, he always was kind of on the sickness side a little bit. We had to kind of keep along. Because I got was 180 pounds. That's yeah. the much cotton yeah. I ever picked in my life in one day. And I could pick 300 some pounds with no problem. Yeah, no so problem. who was like the uh, bully of the family, you know? So what Rosa Bell. <laughs> yeah, he answered that. Yeah, she was a bully of the family. Yeah. But she didn't bully me because but she, she always wanted to be a bully. Yeah. But so, she, she left. But she left. Uh, she left early though. She was yeah, thirteen. Like, 14, she fourteen when she got married. Yeah, she left early. Yeah. So what about uh, Isetta now? Who? I mean. Well, okay. When Mama would leave, well, she always would take over. She would be in charge. But see, Isetta, well, she's going to be cook for us, right? Right. Like we be out in the field chopping cotton and stuff like that. She would leave in time to go home to cook dinner for us. Then we go home all and eat. Then after then we don't come back to the field. But well, she was the oldest one. That when, when Mama leave and go to the other people, white people house to wash and iron and stuff like that, well, see Isaiah would be in charge. And if you done some Isaiah put some on your back end, then and you got a little funny when Mama come then she would take over. You get your two of them. You know what I'm talking about. But is uh, she still living? If she is, I don't know where she is. We don't know. She's and, in Seattle, Washington. But uh the last we heard is Rosebell went over there. And Rosemary did not get her address, and we haven't heard from her since, because Isetta's mind was going bad. That's the only thing we know. And if we, if I knew her social security number, I could find out what she, right. you know, whether she was alive or not. Uh, was uh, Grandma like uh, like uh, Kate? Me no. or what? No, 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 no. definitely not. No, 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 no. no, no. Mama was always nice. Oh no, no. Yeah. And Kate always was mean. Hmm. So, hmm. Well, so what else you want to tell me about? Well, that's all I know about. Uh, uh, who got in the most fights? Yeah. You know. <laughs> I got to win the most of them, too. <laughs> we be walking down the street. I got to win the most I go with these two white boys. We were walking I down the road. Them. Not street, the road. And he yelled a song. He said, let's go over and beat them up. I said, why? What they did? He looked at me, ah, ah. He went over and fought with him. I stood and waited for him. <laughs> and finally quit fighting with him and come on over where we were. We kept on going. Yeah. So, yeah, he's a fighter. I always could fight. Yeah. And I was used to that. When you heard the people holler about I was streetwise, that I was born out streetwise, I was countrywise, I could fight. And I wasn't scared to fight. No, never was scared to fight. No. Did anybody do any hunting? We we hunted rabbits. Yeah, really rather in the neighborhood. Just rabbit, you know. Well, we hunted rabbits to eat survival. Oh yeah, yeah. Hmm. Remember that dog with him named Shepherd? Mm -hmm. yeah. That dog that dog lived a long time. Yeah. yeah. But see, back in them time, we had one old rifle, and half the time we'd have no bullets for it. Yeah. But we'd take old Shepherd and a stick and go out and kill all the rabbits we want. Yeah. So how you do that? Well, the dog. See, the dog was fast. If the, if he didn't go up up in a hollow, the dog would catch him. Yeah. He was just that fast. Then when they go up in the hollow, we get us a stick and twist him out and pull him out. We'll hollow up in the tree, see, yeah. and take the stick and stick it up there and twist the in stick. The It'll catch the hair of the rabbit and, put and pull him down. Sometimes you pull fall off of the rabbit yeah, or yeah. some skin off, then you try again and finally you pull, pull him out. down. Then sometimes you get one up in there and you couldn't. You have his back against it, you'll skin him almost. Yeah. You got to build, build your smoke and smoke him. When they yeah. get they pull that smoke, you will fall out. You ever heard of that? <laughs> yeah, and I ate rabbit. Well, see, I guess that's why I never worried about eating. No, I ate about rabbit about twice since I've been grown. One time when Dad was sick, I came to Little Rock, me and my niece. Mm -hmm. We stopped at a cafe and I bought some rabbit rice and gravy. Mm -hmm. But they sell rabbits in Texas. I don't eat food with it. No. But we ate a mini rabbit. Rabbit, rabbit, rabbit. Okay, and uh, you don't know anything about her grandparents. No. Who's running here? Mama's running here? Yeah. No, 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 no. She never mentioned No, no, no. Okay, now who did you say was adopted? Kate, uh, Kate uh, Frazier? Yeah, she was adopted. She lived with adoption down there. There wasn't no fish on paper. But these people got her and she lived with these people. So do you, do, do, do you remember what their names were? Well, that's, that's, I guess Frazier's. It must be Kate. Must be. Yeah. I, I, so how did you find out that she was adopted? Mama. 
Mama told me that. She, uh, she, she, that was those people she lived with was not her mother and father, wasn't her parents. But you know, down there, they used to say, okay, baby's born, hand say, okay, it's your baby now. That's it. And you kept the baby raised, it was your baby. Yeah. Didn't have to have no official papers. No, no. no. So she never talked, talked, talked anything about her parents or what, do you know when she was adopted? You know? mm -hmm. No, 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 never did. And yeah. Kate was a woman of a few words, and not yeah. too many. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, he said she was mean. Yeah, she was. She was mean. <laughs> yeah, she Tell was me, mean. I told him about that cake, when you cooked that cake, and, and, and uh, Grandpa wanted some of that cake, and he got him some biscuit and put some, some uh, sugar in it. Remember that? Right. That made me cake. mad. A big old cake. She That's had a big cake sitting up there <laughs> on the table, cooked it. Yeah. And Willie Madison, don't you touch that cake. He liked the sweets too. He loved sweets, so he went and got him a biscuit and uh, put sugar in the biscuit and, he, you know. and left one out. Yeah. I'd have kicked that table over. I would have took that cake and cut me a piece and ate and then I'd squish the rest of them face. You do? No, we ain't do you can come up. Uh, no, I got something I want him to do. So when did she so when did she die? Did anybody go to the funeral? You know where she buried yeah. at? Yeah. So she buried down over uh, oh, uh, 59. That's south, was it, was that southeast of you over here? Heading toward Louisiana. Yeah, on 59. Are you all still recording? You just talking? Oh, no, my wedding tour, you can come in. Yeah, so what, no, I want him, him downstairs. Why? No, okay, take over. Yeah. Well, wait a minute, Mom, we got a little information going well, on. Well, you here. get it going when we get finished down here, when we all can come up and sit down, if you don't mind. Uh, so, uh. Yeah, she, she was buried on 159 when she died. Yeah, I went to the funeral. Because mother came down. Came the mother came down. She was buried on 159. That's, that's uh, yeah. south, I think. No, south. It must be south. It was on 159. But well, that's where I, when I come from Texas, that's where I come in the, the Arkansas. It's on 159. Yeah, she got buried. Mother, mother came down there, and I was there. I think that's the only two. It was. Is it a uh, church cemetery? Or? It's a church cemetery, yeah. So what's the name of the church? Ooh. Is it Baptist Church? Yes, a Baptist Church. Holy Ridge Baptist Church. Holy Ridge Baptist Church. Holy Ridge Baptist Church. That on 59. That's the name of Holy Ridge Baptist Church. And uh, you don't know if they put up a uh, marker on the hug or you I don't know. I don't think. The back of them time, no, they didn't have no markers. I, I'm more sure it wasn't. I don't believe it would. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I can find that grave, but not that been a long time ago. But now I got an idea with it, but I don't know. They kept that grave pretty clean, but I don't think they put no headstone. I don't believe. I don't remember been there been a long time back. So how did she die, you know? So what she died? Died of old age. She was old. Uh, she she was well, she had been sick. Well she had been sick, you know, little and little. But that they stole her money, that's when she got sick sure enough then. Cause she's over to give a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. They stole her money, then she got sick and she died sure enough then. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So she died of old age. Old age. She was old. I forgot how old grandma was, but she was old though. She was whipping and she had been whipping the eighties for sure. Uh -huh. she, yeah, she shouldn't whip in the eighties. So uh they didn't bury her with the so they didn't bury her next to her husband then, huh? No, he uh uh William Madison no. When he died he, he went up to well see, her and mama they went to a different church. See, they went to a different church. Her church was down 59. Well, Mama went to church there, was up uh, 105, uh, uh, Highway 65, up to, up, up, on up, they called it up the north end, going up that way. They went to a different church. See, Grandma, that church from Grandma's house down 59 was at least three or four miles, at least, at first. And she used to walk down that church and walk back. It was at least four miles. It might be further than that. But I'm, I'm saying at least, at least that much. Was there any uh, railroad tracks going near it or anything? It was a track on the side, but they walked down the road. It was a railroad track on the side, yeah. See, like the 59 went like this, and going like this with the highway, and, and straight on down, going to lose out, Oak Road, lose out, Bass Trap, lose out, Chickens, all the towns and stars on up like that. But they used to walk down there, down the side of the road. She used to walk down there. But one time I was up there, went, it was a long time ago, and I had a couple, well, I drove up there, and, I, and I, I went over there and asked, where are you finna go? She said, I'm going to church. And I said, well, come on. And I gave her the church. And I said, what time do you get out? She said, I walk back. I, she never tell me, you know. And so we let, we dropped off and we left. And about a couple of hours, I went back to check and showed up. I was just on time. 
and I brought her back. But she used to walk down there and walk back. She would do it. So what was the name of that church again? Holly Ridge. Holly Ridge. Holly Ridge Baptist Church. Yeah, all the all the churches. The one member went to was a Baptist church. That was a Baptist church. And there was a set of railroad tracks. Yeah, the railroad tracks. There track. Holly Ridge. Right, 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 right down there. See that girl like you going down the loose on the railroad track, like the railroad track come like this, the highway here, over between there and there was the church and the cemetery. It was a bunch of houses too, but they're not close together, good distance between it. Then a lot of them cross that track, go over the back of the farm over there. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know if the church kept any records on the people that they buried out there or what? You know, so who was the preacher then? I don't know. I imagine they got records. I imagine the funeral home got records, I guess. I, not, I'm not sure of that. They should have. So what was the name of the funeral home? They held it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I believe the name of the Eudor. I believe you don't refuse me. Let me ask that. I believe you don't refuse me home. It ain't but, let me see. It's only one there. Unless it might be two. Not even one there. Let's put a little lately. I believe you don't refuse me. He probably knew those guys' name, but I'm not good with names. But I think it's only one there. For the, huh. It might be two. It is two. It's two. It's one right there by the track. You know, it's another kind of big one because it got a big one there. I, I can't think of the name of it. Because I remember there's two of them there. There's one right around the corner, been there for years and years as you go down that hill there. You know, back further, what old park used to be, there's another over there. Yeah, there's two of them there. It is, but I don't know the name of it. But I rest probably know it, but I don't know the name, but it's two of them there. It is two there. Okay, and um, but you don't know if she, if, uh, she got a headstone? She... No, I don't well, know. Well, now, without. Well, how big of a funeral was it? I mean, like, were there a whole lot of people there? Not too many, no. No, a little small town, not too many, no. Not no big or huge funeral, just ordinary, no. Was there one funeral home for uh, for uh, the black folks and one for the white folks? Yeah, what? yeah. Because both of them across the track were there for black. You know, across the track, up in town, back over there, they had one or two, for, that was for white. But there are two of them for black, though. There are the black ones and the white hair there, no. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the black hair there and the white hair there, yeah. Okay. All right, so where else? Kate Frazier, though, because she was adopted. Yeah, but out of, from who? I don't know. That's the first I heard of that. I didn't know that. Hmm. I didn't know that. Okay. Well, you see, see, I was young then. And them old people, you uh, you would go ask them things like that. Well, you like to get slapped backwards. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> mm -hmm. but, oh, well, you would get it, you got to hear somebody else say it or something. Then you better not repeat it when they can get it back. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. So what are some of the things that you and uh, Daddy did? Oh, coming up? Mm -hmm. Well, when I left there, uh, let me see, I was about what? I Before was you left, you know, what were some of the... Uh, so what are some of the things you remember the most about him? You know, what did he... Oh, Lord. Well, most I remember about him is he never could do too much. He was always sickly. That's one thing I always remember. And any time we got ready to do something, he always holler, oh, I can't do it. And we always hit a, well, well, that's true. We all had to carry his part all the time. Like a lot of times we'd be out in the woods ready to go cut wood for the winter. Mm -hmm. He'd take the stack it to the house, take the, the wagon, the hold it to the house. He'd get the saw with the saw, with a cross cut saw. And, oh, I'm so tired. He, he never could, he never could do too much. He never, never could, no. But first, he's a nice fella, but he, he just, he never had the kind of wind and the power to do too much. Never, never could. Yeah. I don't see how he kept a job. If he, if he hadn't been well, he probably wouldn't. No, he, he never had much wind, no. You know, like a lot of kids could, could run and play and, and wrestle. He never would wrestle with us. Like, well, maybe like, you know, a bunch of boys, 15, 14, 13 years old. We get a whole spring, all the boys meet up. We just have a wrestling thing. Well, he never could wrestle because the skater was going to get hurt. You know, I would mess with him because the skater was going to get hurt. He always had sickle and he never wrestled. But I used to wrestle with all of them. The big ones, the little ones, you know, different. So what are some of the things y'all did, you and him? I don't remember. What you mean? Like what? Well, you know, y'all go out hunting, fishing. But... You know, traveling or what, you know, what y'all do with kids, you know, did you ever kill anything or what? Oh yeah, we used to go rabbit hunting, yeah. We oh. go go rabbit hunting, kill rabbits. Well, I, we never did do much, well, but sometimes we would go fishing, you would go fishing, but I never did care that much about the fishing, but we used to go rabbit hunting, and we used to, 
I don't know, he was going with us tonight. I don't believe he did. Me and Roy and him was going. We was going gigging bullfrogs in a boat that night. I don't think he ever go with, with us. I don't believe he did. He might have. But see, we had a carbine light. You know what the carbine light is? And so we fill that thing up before we leave home. And when we get down to the river, then we light it. And we had a boat. You just paddle along with your gig frogs and fish too at night when the water get low. But I don't think he ever went with us quite a bit. But I don't think he ever went with us. So he was sickly. Did yeah. they ever find out what he had? Or? No, no. He just always was sickly out of wind or something. No, back in them times, they didn't no doctor to find out no what was wrong with him. Like he is at night, he'd he get out of wind in a minute there now. I don't say he kept my job. He always, maybe, maybe be that sick or cell or whatever you're talking about, might be part of it. So what church did y'all go to now? It was. I mean, like, did she uh, make everybody go to church uh, Sunday yeah, morning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, 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 see, they had it. But well, depends on what part. When we stayed out in the country, we had a church. I forgot the name of that church. We used to go there when we moved to town. We used to go to church. We moved on number eight. We had a church about a block from the house. We used to go to that church. I can't think of it. It was a Baptist church. I can't think of the name of that church we, we used to go to. But you don't never remember seeing John Lewis or any other relatives there at the church? Now he used to be a little preacher, they said, but uh, I never heard him preach. They said he, no, I never seen him. I used to go to, well, see, I was young. I used to go to, with the school teachers, we used to go to Sunday school and stuff like that. But as far as me seeing him at church, in fact, I've been, I never seen him too much last night. I seen him in town or something. Of he used to be in town quite often, but I never been around him that much to mount to nothing. Never, never did. No, I never was around him that much to mount to nothing. Because when I got big enough where I could kind of take care of myself, I left on my own. No, no, no. I didn't mess around with him too much. But I guess he was all right in this way, but I never was around in front of the highest way he was, you know what I mean? Okay, now, when you left, you and Danny went down to... Uh... No, I, oh, no, I left by myself. Okay, so when did Danny leave? He left by... Okay, I think him and Roy left together, I believe. They went, to get, they left together. I think, then I think me and McBride left together. That had been a long time ago. Then we went, we went to Lake Charles. Then we uh, found, what, we know where they stayed at. Cause they, we had, they had, it was, when that time was that big, we found where they stayed. Then we stayed there while I was with them. Then we left them in Lake Charles. McBride and I, then we went to Texas. Cause I didn't like over there in Louisiana. So we went to Texas and we started working over there. And our rest, I think he got drafted in the army from down there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then he left and went to the service. And we, we stayed in Texas. And Watkins, he was old. I don't know what happened to him. Another one of our homeboys. But the last I, uh, I heard, a boy had told me he'd seen him in Indiana. But that had been years, that back in the early 50s. And I never heard from him most since. I don't know if he's still living or dead. But see, I left and went to Texas. Then Mike Bass stayed there four or five years. And he left. He went up the country somewhere. So I stayed in Texas. Do you think that Roosevelt picked up some of her meanness from uh, Kate? Grandma? Mm -hmm. Grandma Kate? Mm -hmm. It wouldn't surprise me a bit in the world. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. Because she always been like that. Like my brother said, because when she got married, she was, she was nothing but a girl. Nothing but a girl. She was a bigger a girl than we were, but she was nothing but a girl. That's what he said, she was 13 or 14. She was nothing but a girl. But I don't know. She she she's a war horse. I don't know. So what about the, what do you remember most uh, about Johnny Edwards? Well, he well he like went to service. I don't know what the seventeen and a half, eighteen or something like that. I was small when he left. Mm -hmm. I remember when he went to the service. I didn't have never been around him that much either, because he went to the service. I I was small. And oh, he went forty what, forty one, forty two, something like that. So you the youngest? No, one see the youngest. I'm next to the youngest. They got uh -huh. one younger than me, the one living uh, uh, in uh, Detroit. Detroit. Yeah, he's okay, younger. Warren? Yeah, he's younger than me. Uh -huh. Cause I didn't remember that much about him. So you and Daddy, basically. Well, he's he's about a year and some older than me. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, I guess that's... Yeah, we're just about a year and some apart. It's not no whole bunch of distance between any of us. Okay. But you don't ever remember hearing or seeing anything. Well, you wouldn't remember Peter Lewis, because by that time he was 
he was gone, but you didn't know that he was up in St. Louis. You never heard anything about your father's people? No, no. But I heard him talk about candy. Yeah, about candy. Yeah, but I heard him you know, well, your mama talk about candy. And I heard her, you know, her and other ladies be talking about, oh, candy's a pistol. He's a sweet back. And I hear him talking, you know, I was young. But I never seen him in my life, but they say he was a sweet back. And I guess the sweet back be one of them long shoes. He was, <laughs> I guess he's the latest man. But I never seen him in my life. Then my daddy had a sister up there. I never seen her in my life. Okay, both and more. Yeah, because when he died, he had a, a car. She came and got the car. Because when I got up there, she had already came and got the car and gone. She didn't even stay for the funeral. For what the reasons, I don't know. But I just want the car. I had a car. And so our people have always been funny Wait people. Wait a minute. When John died. John Lewis died. Uh -huh. yeah. Bertha Moore came and got the car? Mm -hmm. he, he had a car. Oh, he was a... Bertha Moore came... When John he, Lewis died... When I got there, they told me his sister to come and got the car. I said, what happened to his car? His sister came and got it. Did anybody get an address on her? Because I thought she was dead. No. Uh, she lived in St. Louis, right? Yeah. That's the one supposed to come and got the car. That's what they told me. That's the one. Because I said, what happened to the car? She come back. I said, no, no problem with me. It wasn't in the miles, no way. And that, it was a blue and white Ford. Well, it was a Torino, whatever. Torino, whatever you call it. Kind of shout back. I remember. Yeah. It was yeah. a Ford. Daddy. Daddy. Have you got a minute? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what they told me what happened to it. Now, when John Lewis died, did you see Bertha Moore down there? Who? His Bertha sister. Moore. His sister. Because he said that she came and got his car. She didn't yeah, stay for the funeral. That's, that's told that she come came for the funeral, but that uh, yeah, she, but wasn't that she didn't funeral. stay for the funeral. I didn't see her. But she, the car wasn't there either. No, the car was gone. Oh, she came and got his car and left. And didn't come back to the field. Yeah, that, that's right. Oh, okay, okay. So this oh. happened. Yeah, the car was gone. The car was gone. Before you went down, right? She had to come before, before you. Before I went down, down for the funeral, yeah. Yeah, because when oh. I got to ask them what was the car, they said sister came and got the car and gone. And, and she didn't come to the field. Well, well, somebody told me who was that, said they think he sold the car, but I don't know. They didn't know what happened to the car. Cause I asked what happened to the car. That lady, I don't know, I can't think of yeah. names too good. If she stayed back across some kind of fat lady, I forgot her name. You know what the night you stay back over there? The night. Yeah, the night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Night there? Mm -hmm. She stayed in that road back over there yeah, right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. Well, she the one told me that she would come back to the car, but she was coming back to the field. Oh, and she and, didn't come back. She didn't come back to the field, and she got, and I ain't seen her in the car either. Yeah. You know, that, that, that's what they told yeah. me. Where'd she live at? St. Louis. Right, right. I know. Cause she come down from St. Louis to see her when we was on Dr. Anderson's place. Yeah, well, I, I, I wouldn't know if I'd see her. She grabbed big one. Well, i never know if I'd see her. Because I know when I got to ask her, I said, where the car? Oh, yeah, i tell you, Miss Ferris' daughters told me, you know. Uh, Across the street, street. Yeah. yeah. Because they, they call her name, they know that. I don't know about it. So she came and got the car, said so she's going to come back for the few. Oh. And they said, we doubt that. I said, yeah. well, she don't, it don't make no difference. Yeah, she took the car and took off. She did. Yeah, yeah. The Ferris sister. Yeah, we stayed right across the street from where my daddy stayed at. Yeah. Do you know what their first names are? I don't know. That, what was the name? I don't know. One name, Sugar. I, I never forget her name. Kathleen Farris, one of them names. But she dead too now. Yeah. You know what had the baby for me? She's dead. Oh, the one had the baby for you? Oh, yeah, she's been dead. Dr. Knight, she dead. Yeah, I didn't know. Oh, that. Oh, that you been, know, when I went down there. Been dead. She been dead, oh, six, seven years ago. Oh, yeah. Because mm -hmm. I went dead. down there to see the old man, not the funeral, mm -hmm. and me in June. We stopped off, this, you know, that time we, that's 62, I think, uh, in yeah. that 60 Chevy. Yeah. And somebody told me, said, do you know that girl about right here, the baby, right here? I said, yeah, she's over there across the street. I ran over there. Yeah. And uh, there she was. And yeah, so she I did, did too. And because so I remember what happened, because mom had to pay the money to get yeah, you out of jail. Right, yeah. Because yeah. they had him arrested, because it got her pregnant. Yeah. And so I told her, I said, she's out of the yard. I said, you stand still, don't move. Okay, so I walked all around and I checked Take a look at it. <laughs> and I walked all around. She was dark skinned, remember? Uh -huh. uh, long pretty hair. But I looked in her eyes. I said, Well, you fit. But where did you get those blue eyes? Yeah, she had blue eyes, yeah. So where did she get the blue eyes from? Well, her, her pants were real, half white. Mm -hmm. And see, he was dark skinned. Yeah. 
But her pants was, see that was the baby, that was his girl. Yeah, yeah. And because I told her, I said, well you fit, so I tell you the truth, but where did you get those blue eyes? Now if you see it now, she black as I am. Yeah. Hmm. I'd have been oh, yeah, she's the Austrian then. Yeah, but see, I didn't, well, 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 I ain't blue like that no more either. Oh, the eyes ain't blue. No, I don't know. Okay, well, now, how can Bertha Moore, you just can't go down there and pick up a set of keys and drive off with the car. Oh, yeah, you can do that down there. Oh, don't tell me she didn't. You can do that down there. I'm not saying she didn't do it, you know, but she had to have a key to get in the house, somebody. Well, yeah, I well, mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. like. She, well, well that the sister. She walked around through the house and go there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's no problem. Yeah. And she's never contacted y'all or anything? No. Oh. She didn't, because she didn't come back for the funeral. No, she didn't, yeah. No, she sure didn't. No. And so, so, uh, so, in other words, you haven't had contact with her at all since y'all was kids? Right. We was living down there on a Dr. Anderson place. It had been a long time ago. Yeah, she came, and I never forgot what I remember, so she was a great big fat woman, and mama and this woman was laughing about when she pulled off her corset, her belly fell down. <laughs> yeah, she not, was a big one. She's a big one. No, and she got a witch in that on the table. That's the little woman. <laughs> what what you and that's what happened. Because Mama yeah. said, did you see her belly fell down when she pulled off that corset? <laughs> it had corset on the belly. Yeah, she had a corset on the whole belly of it. But back in them times, but see, he was so crazy about that because I don't know why the car was wrong without him. Cause one time I went there and the car went over a year old, and, and what's well, wrong with my car? And so I said, I'm just gonna leave my car and lock it. We're gonna drive your car to Little Rock. We're gonna go to Little Rock. Cause I went there five, six times up there. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna drive your car. What's well, wrong with mine? And boy, he yap yap all the way. Yap yap yap. My little niece, she only was about eight or nine years old. And uh, how fast he's going, baby? He said, she looked at her and said. He only going to 75. <laughs> she said, what? He going to... <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. okay, so... Just only 75, that's all. So, neither one of you ever saw Grandpa Pete? Yeah, I seen him, but I can't remember. Okay, him. now, how can you see him, but he not see him? But he wasn't old enough to remember. No, I don't remember that. But I remember seeing him up there, you know, up there uh, on the old highway, but his father down the road, and up the road, not down, because it's down toward Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Further up the road from Dorothy Lee's, you remember uh, Grandpa Pete's sister or somebody? I seen them two girls, Candace girls. Well, see, remember. they were light-skinned. He took them to, uh, the Candy was our uncle. Candy took those two girls to St. Louis. Candy was a, was a, I said, Mama talk about him, because he was a, a jelly bean, what you call it? What do you call him? A slicker, or whatever you yeah, call him, yeah. backing them down. And, but well, Grandpa Pete, man. He was uh, old when I seen him. I can't register how he looked, but I remember seeing him. Yeah, that is when uh, he died, actually around 1944. See, Candy, Candy took him to St. Louis. He took them two girls up there, too. Because, see, this woman, the Lilton's daughter, I think, wasn't it? Oh, man, Reverend Lilton's was, uh, or some kin to the Lilton's. That was Candy's wife. And he took them girls from her and went to St. Louis. Well, you don't remember, Mama. No, I don't remember. Yeah, because I remember. He died in 1944. Yeah, well, you see, 44, I was uh, uh, 17 years old. Yeah. But he went before then, they went to St. Louis. Candy and them two daughters. And, so, what did, okay, so where did he stay before he went to St. Louis? Uh, up there on the old highway. I don't know exactly, but there was one of those shotgun houses, you know, because he left. He stayed somewhere else, but he moved up there temporarily because he, Reverend Lilton's daughter was his wife. He moved up, took them girls from her, and moved up there on the old highway until he, and then he took off for St. Louis. And Wait, Grandpa what? Pete, he took Grandpa Pete with him. And that was around, I don't know, uh, 39 or somewhere around there. I don't remember. Oh, oh, okay, then, who was he living with, though? Oh, I don't he, know. He, he, I don't know. Okay, and his wife, you don't remember seeing no, his wife? No, no, because she's one of the rebels. I remember no, Reverend no, no. Milton. Peter Lewis's wife. No, 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 no. But uh, Mama told us about her that uh, she was an Indian woman. And uh, Mama remember, Mama said she was an Indian, full-blooded Indian woman. Oh, uh, she on Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. She was full-blooded Indian. 
was a hard worker. <coughs> Peter Lewis didn't work as usual. <laughs> he didn't work? No, he didn't that's, work. That, oh, Lord, he, he just about like the old man, he didn't work. Well, well that's where he got it from. And that woman was working like crazy. And you like to got the spell too, but that was how you made it. <laughs> because I had to survive. Yeah, well, well, I guess that's the reason. Survival. Yeah, well, I guess that's the reason. <laughs> the Lord had to be with you for you to make it. Yeah. If yeah. you had to get out of a job and work like I used to have to work, you couldn't have made it. I worked pretty hard in my day now. I, yeah. I did a lot of hard work I in my day. Jack Hammond and Long I used to do all that some all of it. So, you left first, and then he, no, and then you left. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I left, went down to Lake Charles, Louisiana yeah. to work because this man come to town driving a truck. You don't need no money. Come on, get on the truck. You don't need no money. I ran all the way down home. We lived down uh, uh, number eight. Yeah, down across on, the bridge. On, uh, 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 not there, what they mail man, Brett Crocklin. Yeah, right there across the bridge on the left there. Yeah. Yeah, we lived on Brett, Brett Crocklin's place. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I ran home and asked Mama, could I go? I send you some money. And uh, cause they the war, they were building a, a gasoline plant down there yeah. in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Well, people were begging people to go to work. Right. And yeah. so he come up there with a long truck with benches in it mm -hmm. and put me in, in there. And I asked mom, can I go beg her? So she let me go. And I asked how much money she was. She said, I ain't got but three dollars to my name. I said, mom, give it to me. And she gave it to me. And I run and jumped on the truck yeah. and rode all night. And they got us down and we lived in a, like an army. Barracks like a tit -like. Yeah, with carts, that. yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. until for two weeks, then you had to leave, yeah. get out and get your own room. And I worked down there, you know, in Louisiana, then he came down there later. Mm -hmm. And I seen the one, I didn't like over there, I left there. He, he left, went over to uh, Orange, Texas. Yeah, I didn't like over there. Yeah. Later on, I came over to Orange, Texas. Because yeah, you stayed over there a while. A little bit, because I left because I had a good <coughs> job, but the guys would lose a shovel or an axe or something. And then they come to me, I lost my shovel. I said, what's your number? And I go to the board, because I was a two, two man, room yeah, porter. Two, yeah, yeah. And I go to the board and pull his ticket and tear it up. I said, you're okay now, you don't have to pay for it. Yeah, you had to pay for them two then. Yeah. If you lose them. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, I said, they're going to catch me. And then I got scared and went over to Texas with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They begged me not to leave. They wouldn't tell you nothing. No. That, that was for Guff, too. Mm -hmm. That was for Guff Goodrich. Mm -hmm. You'd have been retired long ago. Yeah, because I could have stayed there working. And that thing, you know what they done? All them guys were working there, they turned it into a big old huge. It was right side of the house. That thing they built from way back there where it was, mm -hmm. all the way up to the road. I they, saw it when we passed on. They uh, call it a, a Maplewood. Yeah. Well, I that saw it when it. we passed, coming from New Orleans, going to see you. That's right. We passed right. I said, there it is. That's that, that plant that, where I used to work. They, they call it Maplewood. Mm -hmm. And boy, that, that plant's going to come all the way up to the highway. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, yeah. yeah. right about 10 or 12 miles on this side of Lake Charles, going towards Texas. Mm -hmm. You'd have been retired long years ago. Yeah. yeah. So uh, John Lewis never talked about his grandparents or nothing. Y'all didn't not. see him when you was growing up. Uh, uh, he talked on that tape to me and you, remember? How about yeah. He was a good, nice old fellow and everything. You know? I, I never heard of him. You know, he talked to me, yeah, that's the only time he talked. Okay, well. I got to remind me to bring that tape home with me, that tape recorder. I can see where I can get it going, because then I record them tapes myself. Well, yeah. Okay. I, the best I could do for you, young man, because I left when I was young. And I He had been dead inside of me for a month, mm -hmm. but I was going to the doctor every week. Mm -hmm. I was hooked up to a fatal monitor at the hospital when I got there, mm -hmm. and a fatal monitor tells you what's wrong yeah. if there's a heartbeat. So, if prior to this and going to the doctors all this time, nobody had indicated that there was trouble. No. When you went into labor, as far as you knew, the child was alive because yeah, nobody told you. She was moving. She was moving. The baby was moving. You felt her moving. Yeah. And so. They tell you then that the child has deteriorated and has been dead inside you for a month. Right. Did you believe that? I didn't really believe it, but I didn't have a lot of choice but to believe right. that the baby was dead. So what are we looking at here? Is this the death certificate? Yes, it is. There are two death certificates. One was in my medical file and at the hospital, and then this one um, Tim got for me. Mm -hmm. There are two different causes of death. On two each. Di death certificates that list two different causes of death. Right. So did you have a, you had a funeral? I had a funeral, yes. We uh, buried her in Mesquite 
at um, a funeral home at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Was there, there was a ceremony, was there a casket? It was graveside services, but yes, there was a casket. And the casket was never opened? No, they told us we couldn't open it because of more deterioration in the baby. Okay. And we could not see the baby. So you left the grave thinking, did you see the casket go into the grave? No, huh? You left the grave before the casket right, went we in? we left, and they are supposed to do that after we leave. Mm-hmm. Now, this, isn't this amazing to you all? I tell you what's amazing to me about this story, is that so many people would have to conspire. It means the nurses knew, means the doctor knew, means the people at the grave knew. That means a lot of people knew that this was all a scam. Because, so when did you have the grave dug up? Okay, uh, March the 14th, after reading Linda Thompson's uh, article in the paper, I got to wondering. So I went to the records building, couldn't find anything. So what did you do? Go back. You read Linda's story right, I, and I, thought it sounded too much like your own story. Like it could have happened to me. I wondered if it did. Uh -huh. So I went to look for a death certificate, couldn't find one, and then notified Tim. And, Who's a private investigator. Right, notified him. But what were we looking at, Tim, if that wasn't a death certificate? Actually, what you're looking at, in Cindy's uh, medical records, there was a death certificate that was not filled out. All it had was a doctor's signature, the cause of death, and the date of death. And what was the cause of death, supposedly? Umbilical cord accident. And according to the medical records, all the way through it, it labeled it as umbilical cord accident. However, the death certificate found filed with the state indicated the cause of death was abruptial placentia. Uh-huh. And so, what do you believe happened? I don't believe there was ever a baby buried. I can't believe in my heart that there was ever a baby buried. Because when we went out there, I, I was there for two and a half hours and there was nothing. And you mean I, in the grave, when you all dug up the, the grave? grave? Nothing, nothing. Had your husband, now this is the, the key thing here, your husband, prior to this, had talked to you about selling the baby, had he not? He had talked to me about giving the baby up, and he knew that there would be money involved, that he could get money. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, it was a very abusive marriage. And I just, um, I didn't want to do it, but I didn't feel like I had a lot of choice mm -hmm. to give the baby up. Mm -hmm. So I feel like he knew, he knew there'd be money involved. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like that that's, that's why he made me do it, so that he could get money, and he did get money. But made you do what? Because you... You were looking for your baby. I mean, when, you, when your child was, was born, you wanted to hold the baby. So what did he make you do? Oh, then he didn't make me do nothing. Uh-huh. But when you say he made me do it, what did he make you do? He made me give it up for adoption. He wanted you to give it up for adoption. So, because he knew there was money involved. He knew he could get money. So had you signed papers? Yes, at first I did sign one set of papers. And then what happened? Once the child was born, you decided no, you... Um, during my pregnancy, my sister asked me if she could have my baby. Her, mm -hmm. and her, her and her husband take my baby. And I could see my baby and be around my baby, mm -hmm. you know, and they would pay for all the medical. And I mentioned this uh, to the attorney at question, and he got very irate and said that I was legally bound to continue through with the adoption. So when you had your baby that night in the hospital, were you... What is it with you tonight? What is it with you? Why are you so fixated on staying in this garage, Marco? Are you so fixated on getting out of it. You're up to something, aren't you? Oh, I'm not. You can't kid a kid or toots. Couldn't we go up to the house? Couldn't we go up to the house? Yes. How about a glass of wine? I'd like you to take my shoes off. We could put our feet up and we could you make plans and me together? for the most delicious dinner oh, you've ever Oh, that'd be great. Now I know you're up to something. Tony, Tony, is she going to be all right? Uh, we're not going to know the full extent of her injuries until the CAT scan and the x-rays are back. Oh, God. It's a head injury, isn't it? Well, that's what we're worried about most. Listen, I know this is real hard on you right now, but you have to not ask me any more questions. i got to go to radiology. Oh, How long is it going to be until you know anything? 30 minutes, if we're lucky, okay? I'll be back. She's got to make it. Mr. Ned Ashton? Yeah, yeah. Um, I assume you're here to investigate the hit and run? That's right. This is Officer O'Rell. I'm Officer Stockwell. Fine. This is Miss Barrett. We were together when we found Jenny. 
Now, we received two calls into 911, and I'm assuming that um, you folks made one of them. Yeah, yeah, I, I did. I made one of them when we found her in the garage. We didn't realize at first that it was a hit and run. We didn't. Well, no, actually, when we saw the skid marks in the glass around, we just assumed that she was hit by a car. How did you happen to be at the hotel at the time? Oh. Well, we owned the hotel, and we had just come back from a business meeting when we found her. I see. In that case, we're going to need a list of all the guests currently registered at the hotel, okay? Absolutely. Fine. I'll have it for you tonight. Is there anything else I can do? Uh, no, ma'am, not right now. Our investigators are down covering the scene of the accident, and that should give us more information on the perpetrator's car. You wouldn't happen to know the woman who witnessed the whole accident, would you? There was a witness? Yeah. She didn't give her name or anything, but she did happen to say that the victim was hit by a station wagon male driver. You two will be available if we need to speak further? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's good. Thanks. Thanks. Um, I'm going to go to the hotel and uh, get a printout of everybody in the hotel. Oh, no, you stay here in case Tony comes back. I, I can do that. I guess I should give Paul another call, too. I suppose I should call William. Julia, I don't want Paul around here, right? Just... I think Jenny would. Sneak up on you, can I? No, you can't. What are you still doing up? Thinking. Having a drink. You? Just thinking. You want a drink? No, thanks. I just uh, didn't want to forget this. I wanted to keep it near me during surgery tomorrow. Is that a lucky charm? Yeah. Could you help me with it? Sure. Here. You think the metal is foolish? No. Not at all. I just, uh, I don't know much about this stuff, I guess. There you go. Thank you. Any second thoughts about tomorrow? None. Good. Because I'm sure if the doctors weren't confident in the procedure, they wouldn't recommend it. I know that. I guess I've just been so excited at the possibility of being able to see again that I haven't let myself focus on anything negative until tonight. Well, don't do it. Don't do it. We don't need negativity tonight. Mm, I like the way you think. Yeah, well, good, because you better like it, because I'm going to be hanging real close to you through this whole process. You know, oh, you've done so much for me already that I wish I was strong enough to say that I don't really need you to take care of me, but I'm not strong enough. And I do need you. I need you a lot. Well, don't worry. Nothing bad's gonna happen to you. Not that I found you. And then I found you again. I'm Walt Willie. I play Jackson Montgomery on All My Children. I asked that my next scene be with a beautiful co-star, and look what they gave me. New Conicus Super XG color print film. With this sharp picture and beautiful colors, it's everything I've ever wanted. And if being on All My Children is what you've always wanted, just enter the Conica Picture Yourself on All My Children sweepstakes. Win it, 
and you'll appear on the show instead of just watching it. Look for details at your local Conica dealer. For your nearest dealer, call 1-800-MY-CONICA. You and your family are invited to experience an all-new fairy tale classic, Happily Ever After. From the producers of Ghostbusters and the Cosby Kids comes an animated motion picture masterpiece starring Ed Asner, Dom DeLuise, and Grammy Award winner Irene Cara. I'm Snow White. The family entertainment event of the year. Filmation's Happily Ever After. A pleasure, darling. Rated G starts Friday, May 28th at theaters everywhere. I think men and women should share household chores. Don't you? I cook, and my husband, Bill, does the dishes. He's terrific at it. He always scrapes the plates, and he never, ever overloads. No matter who does the dishes, Cascade does the dirty work. Other leading brands can leave spots so your dishes look dirty. Cascade with sheeting action gets them so clean they're virtually spotless. Perfect! Mm, just like you, my little love. Maybe they're biting over that way, Dad. Let's try over there, Dad. Tonight, Dad's gonna have a few sore muscles. I think I see some over there. Fortunately, there's doctor-recommended Motrin IB. Motrin IB, the relief of Motrin in non-prescription strength. Dad, Mom and I left you this sandwich. Hellman's Real Mayonnaise makes food so irresistible, people can't wait to taste it. Get a taste of what the best can do. We left you this banana. Bring out the best. I didn't expect you back so soon. Well, it was important that I be here now. We have a lot to talk about. Maybe, maybe we can talk and, and sort things out. Bill? I was hoping I'd run into you. Really? Can't imagine why. We left a lot unsaid the other day. I'm not as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> You're not going to make this easy for me, are you? Um, if you have something to say, I suggest you do it quickly because I'm just about to go upstairs. Holly, I know this is going to be hard for you to believe, but I am concerned about what all this has done to you. You did not deserve to be hurt. Neither did Bill. Oh, Victoria. You're not going to give up on him, are you? That's none of your business. Now, unless you have anything else to say... Honey, I... you know what I've observed about you since I've known you? Very admirable things. I've watched you be very unselfish when it comes to Bill. I've watched you put your own wants and needs aside. I've watched you take yourself totally out of the picture. All because you think that Bill has conflicted feelings about Victoria. Maybe that's what it means to love someone. Give them space when they need it. Something that you couldn't possibly understand. I do understand that. But in this case, that is not the way to go. Holly, fight for Bill. Are you going to lose him? I don't need you to be my personal cheerleader. Thank you. Holly, listen to me. He's chasing a dream from the past, and you know it. You're the one who's chasing a dream. You still think that if you can get rid of Bill, that then Victoria is going to turn to you. I admit it's a scenario that would work for me, but it would also work for you. Except that you and I play by different rules, I'm happy to say. This isn't about right or wrong. It's, it's more about strategy, not morals. Holly, 
Fight for Bill, and we'll win. Don't fight for him, and we will lose. Wouldn't you rather win? It was a perfect evening. Yes, it was. You know, when I was alone all those years, I used to wonder what it would be like if you suddenly appeared in my life again. I mean, what, what would we say? What would I feel? Does reality disappoint? Mm, not at all. Victoria. Uh... You know, you were the first man I ever loved. And the only man I ever loved. Do you remember what it was like with us? dreamed I'd feel like this. This is only the beginning for us. Hey, hey, hey. You're not going back to him. That's not even an option. I love you. And I'm gonna love you to the day I die. Guess that makes us even. of discussion. William, it's, it's Julia. I'm at the hospital. What? What happened? It's Jenny. She's been in an accident. What kind of accident? It was a hit and run. Tony says her condition is critical. I'm on my way. What is it? My sister has been in a car accident. I have to go. be my new apartment. Good thing I brought Lysol Pine Action. It cleans with hospital-type disinfection. The strongest you can buy. Now it's starting to feel like home. Lysol Pine Action, a more powerful pine. See this? This is no room for error. Around this face is the place for an Ogilvy Precisely Right Perm. Precisely Right automatically times your perm automatically conditions your hair, then shuts itself off. Which is why no other kind of perm gives you more beautiful waves and curls. See this? This is no room for error. This is precisely right by Ogilvy. You just can't get it wrong. Lysol spray use number 64. That funky smell in the garbage can. Use number 75. Rover's latest surprise. Use number 72. The busiest seat in the house. Lysol disinfectant spray. There's nothing this can can't do. Hey, I'm one full-sized adult. So naturally, I'm big on nutrition. But there's something inside of me that still gets really pumped about frosting. But who's kidding who? This body's a shrine. And we don't put fat or salt in the shrine. I'm lighting up. Relax. With Kellogg's Frosted Mini Wheats, you can have it all. For the adult in you, whole grain nutrition, fat-free and no salt. For the kid in you, lightly frosted, great taste. Hey, I'm no dumbbell. I know what I like. The frosting. Michael Jordan is going for the layup, and it's good. George again, and it's good. Jordan, unbelievable. Wait a minute, what's Jordan doing? Did he call for a timeout? Don't tell him. He's not. He is. Great tasting ballpark beef franks. The hot dogs, hot dogs love, and it's good. 
a shocking accusation. What are you arresting them for? The rape of Marty Saybrook. That rocks the town of Landview. You know no one's going to believe me. How could you tell such a vicious lie? You did rape her! You have to go after those people that hurt you. One life to live. What does one baby... I have a son. One mommy... You're going to be a great mom. And two dads equal... Why do I keep feeling like the baby's mine? It equals trouble. I am taking my wife and son home today. Four's a crowd on Lubbock. Hey. Paul. Where is she? Paul, no, she's in radiology. What, what, the, what happened? Is there a car accident yeah, or something? It appears to be some kind of a hit and run. All we know is that she has a head injury. What? Ashton, if you got anything to do with this, no, no, I swear I'll kill you! Get out of, get out of, get out of my face! It. I don't have any business being here right now. I like hell, I don't. Look, look, Ned and I are the ones that found Jenny Paul. I rode in the ambulance with her. If we hadn't found her, she'd probably be dead right now. I'm sorry, okay? I didn't know, all right? I, I understand. Um, excuse me. Tony, how is she? I have to operate. We're, what? We're prepping her for surgery right now. What happened? What happened? The uh, blow to her head caused hemorrhaging, which is bleeding in the brain, and I have to operate to relieve the pressure to that area. You know, she's going to be all right, though, after that, right? I mean, you know, you relieve the pressure, she's okay, right? Really, until I know how much damage there is, uh, I can't tell you for sure. Tony, what is it that you're not telling us? She's uh, in extremely serious condition. She could possibly die. You know, I think she really has a good chance, Mike. I'll be back. Are you hiding something? Are you hiding something in here, perhaps? At like a domestic time, you're young right boy? No, a Marco, come on. I'll tell you everything tomorrow, Marco. That's not good enough for me. Fine, Marco. You want to play cars? Let's play. Put the car cover on oh, Tracy's wait, wait, car. Hold it. Now then you want to put get the out cover of here. on the car yourself with your own hands? That's kidding. What is this? <coughs> I, uh, I just had a, a little accident. What kind of a little accident did you have? I'm not sorry that she's dead. You think that's bad? No. She was mean. She was a bad, bad mommy. She had blonde hair. Beautiful blonde hair. Just like yours. But she didn't love her rye baby, did she? Poor little boy. Doesn't really matter now that I've won, does it? How did you win, Ryan? You want to know how I felt after it was done? Tell me. Clean. <laughs> did you feel clean when your fiancé died, too? No. I'm very, very glad. Linda, Linda, quite contrary. Now I'll never have to marry. <laughs> it's not funny, you know. Is that why she had to die? Because Linda was contrary? Because she treated you just like the way your mother treated you? She shattered like glass. All sharp and mean. Did Gloria shatter like glass? And Michelle? They were in my way. So they had to die. Ask them. They know. Should I ask Helen Hunter, too? I don't remember Helen. Helen had long blonde hair that went down her back. She died just before Maggie Davis. You remember Maggie, don't you? Yes. Yes. What about all the others, Ryan? The ones in the diary? S, B, M, P? All of them. <laughs> Linda died, Gloria died, Michelle died. They all died, Ryan. Michelle died. Mother died. 
Yeah. Yes, I did. I killed them all. Sylvie, it's dead. I stabbed her once. And then once again when she ran. Felicia, don't go. I have to go, Ryan. It's time. Stay. I can't. Did you ever love me? Just tell me that. Did you ever love me? She's gone, too. Just like all the others. Well, I, I guess I didn't win after all, Mom. I guess I was wrong. I guess you won. Well, damn you, Mother! All I ever wanted was for her to love me. All I ever wanted was her love. All I ever wanted was their love. But they wouldn't give it to me. Why? Because they saw me the way that you did, the same way that you did, because of what you made me. They saw what you made! They saw what you made, Mother! Felicia? Felicia? What? Dead people don't believe. for a star and we'll reveal the startling plot to finally win an emmy for soap star susan lucci plus don't miss gene dixon's star guide to love money and health psychic predictions to help you make the best of summer reach for a star to explore sally jesse Raphael's surprising secret life find out if she really cheated on her husband and star invites you to tv beauty jane seymour's wedding of the year then dolly parton gina davis and julia roberts headline the fashion page celebs read first would you be caught dead in these outfits reach for a star one little pack of Kool-Aid is a whole <laughs> lot of fun. <laughs> Wacky flavors. There's vitamin C. And everyone gets a big mustache. Kool-Aid soft drink mix. You really get your quarter's worth. Try Airwick Airwaves, the air freshening system you control. Turn it on. Turn it on. Turn it up. Turn it up. Way up. Way up. Turn it down. Turn it down. Way down. Way down. Completely adjustable Airwick Airwaves, the advanced air freshening system. General Hospital will continue in a moment. Tomorrow, a preview of the daytime Emmys. Also helping your children attain a positive self-image. Plus General Hospital's Antonio Sabato, Jr. On Good Morning America tomorrow. Good afternoon, I'm Ted Henry with word of a drive-by shooting, a motel room robbery, and a high-speed chase all involving the same people. We're going to have all today's news, sports and weather at 5 and 6. The Ohio Lottery and WEWS present the best of the class of 1993. The Ohio Lottery and TV5 salute the best of the class of 93. I dreamed of this day all my life. But two weeks ago, when I couldn't fit into my wedding dress, I knew I had to lose weight fast. So I used the Quick Trim Plan from Cybergenics, and I went from this to this and lost all the weight I needed to in just two weeks. Quick Trim is the guaranteed all-natural diet plan, medically designed to help you lose the weight in just two short weeks. For me, Quick Trim was a dream come true. Available at GNC, MC Sports, Revco, Sears, and other fine health food stores. On the next Oprah, a senator's wife and the man who stalked her. And then you left the scene of the accident. I panicked. Honey, 
You never panic. You have nerves of steel. I didn't this time. I couldn't think. What should I do? I don't know yet. Just give me a... God, just let me think this What would you do? Second. It's not a matter of what I would do. What's important here is... I think you should call a lawyer and then go call the police. I can't. Look, this person, he wasn't dead, was he? She. And I don't know. This is bad. That's what I was hoping this wouldn't happen. This is so bad. Marco, oh. please stop saying that. Do you know who this person is? Do you know her very well? Well, who is it? Jenny. Jenny. Jenny? You hit Jenny? What, you went after her and you ran over Jenny? No, I didn't. Do you think I'm deliberately capable of running her over? Well, that's what I'm asking you. Is that Are what you did? You've done everything else you could to go after her. Did you, did you or did you not deliberately hit her run is not my style! All right, I'm sorry. I believe you. It's just... Look, you gotta understand, not everybody's gonna be... Le that's a hard thing for everybody to swallow. Shut up! one thing I think we're I think you've got oh, some serious trouble this time you're bleeding no I'm not you said yourself dead people don't bleed there's blood on your arm you're alive no I'm not you were there I was at the Casket, remember? You saw me at the grave. It is you. You set me up. No, you I You got me to tell my secrets. No. Now, who the hell else is here? Nobody. There's nobody here, just like I told I you. Trusted I trusted you. you. Well, you can continue. Damn it, I trusted you. No. Why did you have to be like everybody else? He's lying to me and hurting me like all the other ones. Tell me you love me. I want to help you. Tell me you love me. Prove it. Tell me you love me. I love you. Alberto VO5? Frizzies. Split ends. VO5 hairdressing quenches my hair. If you use these, you need this. After perm, VO5 brings my hair back to life. You know what the five stands for? Five organic conditioners. Concentrated. So you got control, shine, in the palm of your hand. It conditions in seconds. Just look at those highlights. <laughs> Why Alberto VO5 conditioning hairdressing? Because a touch does so much. Dieters have different needs, so Accutrim made different formulas. My appetite was humongous before Accutrim maximum strength. I would lose my willpower after 3 p.m. until late day. If it weren't for 16 hour, I'd eat all day and all night. Accutrim, one is right for you. It's a thrill a minute at the Bill Pickett Invitational Rodeo. But when cowboys take falls, they get hard to tackle ground in dirt. And to clean and whiten dirty shirts, you need Liquid Tide with Bleach Alternative. It has the cleaning power of Tide, plus bleach-like whitening power. And no chlorine means it's safe for colors. A grimy shirt got only this white with this other liquid, but Tide gets it whiter. So for superior performance, it's Liquid Tide with Bleach Alternative. Your lips need special protection from the sun's harmful rays. That's why there's new Blistex Ultra Protection with five protectants, SPF 30. Blistex Ultra Protection. This season, it's on everybody's lips. Recently, an object was sighted. It was big. Bigger than big. Huge, huge, large, astronomically big. Big would be an understatement. Very big. Huge. Some guy. Big. Huge. Oh. 
when it arrives. You better not be alone. Bigfoot. Pizza Hut! From Pizza Hut. Two square feet of pizza. 21 slices on a tasty new crust. $10.99 for up to three toppings. It's bigger than Pizza Pizza. Bigfoot from Pizza Hut. A legendary value. Tuesday, Jesse and his band are off to Japan. This is unbelievable. <laughs> and find a whole new world. What's the matter, guys? Don't you like sushi? Full house. Sushi. Then Tyler gets a lesson in love. <laughs> There's a little boy watching us. Well, you gotta learn somewhere, baby. <laughs> Hanging with Mr. Cooper. Then, is Roseanne's mom over the hill? I don't want you to get old. I know, dear. You're just dragging me with you, and I don't like it. Roseanne, Tuesday. Jenny's in surgery. Tony's going to operate on her. Yeah. What are her chances? Uh, she's in critical condition, William. Oh, God. What's going on? What's going on? I don't know. Paul looks very grim. I'm going to go find out what's happening. You stay put. I don't want any of my men to see you, all right? No, Sean, I'm going to find another phone, all right? I'm going to check with Robin, see if Felicia checked in. Meet you here. Volunteer Jan Lowry, please contact Volunteer Services. Volunteer Jan Lowry, please contact Hi. volunteer. Oh, the law's here. And about time, huh? Why, what's going on? It's a hit and run accident, Sean. What hit and run? What, you don't know about Jenny? No, I don't. Great. Your own men over there don't even tell you what's going on? I'm sorry, Ned, but I've been tied up in another case. Uh, Bill, why don't you come with me? We'll find out what my men have turned up, huh? Let's go. Oh, Commissioner, glad you're here. Uh, this is Mr. Eckert, the uh, victim's brother. What have you got? Well, nothing much, sir. Take a look. No license number? No. No, we don't even know who called in the report on the station wagon, but we're going to go check out a lead right now. All right, you uh, report back to me directly. Yes, sir. Understood? Got it. Sean, what are the chances of getting a hold of this bastard? As long as it takes us hard, it's going to be, Bill. Sean, I'd appreciate knowing who did this. All right, Bill, right. you just hang in there. I'll be back later, man. So, what'd they find out? Did you find anything? Uh, there's an abandoned car. Maybe that's uh, the one. I checked with Robin at the Brownstone. I got a hold of her. Felicia hadn't checked in. But apparently your men have uh, staked out Chamberlain's place. They've searched it, but they found nothing. Well, she hasn't shown up anywhere. That means she's still here in the hospital. You hear from Bobby? Yeah, she's checked the garage. Chamberlain's car's still here. Better get a move on. We got lots of floors to go. Okay.
It's never fun to eat and run, to rush and eat too fast. Cause you know it's gonna catch up with you at last. For acid indigestion or heartburn with headache, nothing's faster than Alka-Seltzer. Get yourself some Alka-Seltzer and you'll feel better fast. Now is your chance to own Walt Disney's masterpiece, Pinocchio! Critics have called it the single greatest film ever produced by Disney. Now you can buy Pinocchio on video cassette for the last time this century. Yes, I'm off the hook. Huh? Not enough stuff to do these dishes. Not so fast. You just need a spoonful with joy. <laughs> All these greasy dishes with one spoonful of joy? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't buy it. Well, I do. Using so little saves us money. Compare a spoonful of lemon joy to many leading brands. They quit leaving all these dirty dishes. But joy cleans the whole sink full. Spoonful worked. Joy saves us. Uh, but not from drying the dishes? Just a spoonful of lemon joy cleans more to save you more. For really clean teeth, you could try a vacuum cleaner or get an advanced toothbrush. The advanced design reach has an angled neck to reach back teeth. A special rubberized handle for more control, a comfortable streamlined head, and the cleaning power of up to 3,500 bristles. So, for maximum clean with minimum effort, don't use a vacuum, use a state-of-the-art toothbrush. Advanced design reach for all the hard-to-reach places. When you look at plastic, you know how it helps things stay fresh and safe and light and unbreakable and strong and easy to carry. But take another look. Plastic also saves energy because it helps make cars lighter to save gas. And plastic insulation helps save energy at home. Even these strong plastic bags help save energy because they take less energy to make than other grocery bags. To learn more, call this number for a free booklet. And take another look at plastic. Wednesday, live from New York, daytime hits prime time. And this time, it's for the award that counts. Walt Willie and Susan Lucci host the 20th Annual Daytime Emmy Awards, Wednesday. I'm sorry. I gotta go. No, Mark, Honey, don't leave me. Please don't think. leave me. No, baby, I, I, I gotta go. There's nothing I can do to help you on this. Other than become an accessory, how can I help you? You already are. Tracy, good luck, okay? Please. No, Just Marco, you don't understand how scared I am. What am I going to do? I do. I do understand. I'm sorry. Help me. What? What can I do? How could I help you out of this one? I need to hear you say that you'll help me. Well, you won't be sorry. I'm afraid I'm already a little sorry. Oh, gosh. Thank you so much for getting me out of this. Wait, 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 wait. And exactly let me tell you something. You You're going to be set here. for life, Jack. Set for life. Anything you hey, want. I want you to Seven understand I don't steel. approve of any of this. You left Jenny unattended there. I want you to think about that, okay? All I think about is Jenny. And I didn't completely abandon her. I called 911. Well, you didn't tell me that before. I called 911 anonymously after I left the garage. Give me the cup. Wait, 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 hold it. Left the garage. But was there anybody in the garage? Was there anybody there to see you? Um. No, I don't think so. It was late. <clears throat> might be in the clear. I mean, unless. Unless what? When you went back to check on Jenny, how did she look? There was a pool of blood coming from her ears and from her nose. Was she breathing? I don't know. Were her eyes open? No. 
If you had to make an educated guess, was she alive or was she dead? Dead? Dr. Rolleston, please call extension 5732. Come on. You're not naive, Julia. You must have figured it out by now. He's still in love with Jenny. You're just around to soften the pain. Introducing KFC Hickory Wings. Tender fried wing pieces brushed with a hickory mesquite flavored sauce. A taste enjoyed by great outdoorsmen. And not so great. New KFC Hickory flavored wings. When I get a yeast infection, I want an effective cure at a reasonable price. So I switch from gynolotrimin to Mycelec 7. Because Mycelec has the same full prescription strength medicine. And it costs a lot less. So now my choice, my cure, is Mycelec. What is it? Ruffly, ruffly. What do you want, boy? Ruffly. What is it, fella? Ruffly, ruffly. Oh, Pepsi. Ruffly. I got him trained. Denture wearers, here's Jane Powell for Polyden. Worried about denture odor? You'll love new Mintier Double Action Polyden. A new Mintier Double Action tablet that fights tough stains and controls denture odor. Try new Double Action Polyden. They're here. Kodak brings your kids Mickey's Toontown Puppets. These are the moments. Don't let them pass you by. Straight from their cartoon home in Mickey's Toontown at Disneyland. The Kodak moment. Send for Mickey, Minnie, Chip, or Dale in their Toontown Puppet Theater. Yours for $3.50 each when you buy these Kodak products. See this display for the magic moments of Mickey's Toontown. Don't let them pass you by. Tomorrow, who do you think is daytime's best actress? The stars compete for top honors in the 20th Annual Daytime Emmy Awards, live from New York. For 15 years, 2020 has brought you the stories that touch your life. Tonight, they'll do it again. 15 years of magic moments in one special anniversary program. Laugh, cry, be touched. Hugh Downs and Barbara Walters celebrate 15 years tonight at 9.30, 8.30 Central.
Now, from News Channel 5, Cleveland's live 24-hour news source continues. Good afternoon, everyone. Here's the latest news. A 15-year-old boy is the city's latest shooting victim. He was gunned down today outside an East Cleveland supermarket. The assailants then went on a robbery spree and ended up in a high-speed chase with authorities. Two men are in custody. A third remains on the run. We'll have details on that shooting and also a drug bust at Hopkins Airport coming your way in one hour on Live on 5. You think elevator music is taking you nowhere? Think again. Today's Easy Listening is on WDOK 102.1 FM. Living, loving, building, growing. Hometown proud America. Grill out with high grades hot dogs and grill master chicken or turkey franks. Only 69 cents. Zesty flavor open pit barbecue sauce, just 69 cents. And delicious cool whip topping, a big buy for 79 cents. Happy Memorial Day. We call it a unified ergonomic interior design. Ray Campbell calls it his quiet cabin in the woods. We call it high strength steel body construction. Emily Ross calls it a place to put her valuables. We call it an impressive value starting at around $12,000. Tom Reese calls it more affordable than his daughter's wedding. We call it Corolla, the all new Toyota Corolla, the brand new car with a familiar name. Paul from General Hospital. Live from SeaWorld, Wednesday. My guests today are stalkers. They admit to following and threatening the life of somebody they say they love or used to love. Why did they do it? That's what we're going to attempt to understand today as we go inside the mind of a stalker. John Cooper and Bill are two men who confessed to stalking their wives. They first appeared on a show that I decided not to air back in November of last year. I'll tell you why I didn't air that show in a moment. Men are not the only ones, though, who stalk. Also joining us is Mary Bailey. She admits to stalking her ex-husband and threatened to kill him with a butcher knife. Mary appeared on a show we did on Women Who Stalk. Here's a clip from that show. You'll remember, Mary. She walks over to the telephone and she dials 911. She says, send someone here now. I'm going to kill my husband. Then she came back over to me and yelled at me some more. And she decided that she announced that she was going to the kitchen. She says, yes, I am going to the kitchen. She walks in the kitchen, pulls out the butcher knife and approaches me start swinging it at me, you know, high, low, every direction, switching hands. And, of course, you know, the blade is this long, and I couldn't very well stick my hand out there, and I was jumping back, moving around as much as I could just not to get cut. Did you think she was going to kill you? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. she's, I'm, I believe she's quite capable of it, too. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to find out from Mary what has happened since that taping. Later in the show, you'll meet the woman on the cover of This People magazine. She is the wife of a U.S. senator. A stalker terrorized her family for nine years. Her stalker, Thomas Humphrey, left hundreds of harassing messages on her answering machine, like this one. If I feel that I've been wrongly discriminated against in this case, the first thing I'm going to do is go to the first person I think is wrong, and I'll blow his brains out. I go, the second person is, uh, I think is wrong me. I blow his brains out. I go, the third person who I think is wrong me, the wrong me. And I go, blow his brains out. And it's up to you to protect yourself from that. Hmm. We talked to that man who left that message from his prison cell. And we'll show you that interview a little later on in the show. But first, the show I did last November with John. Cooper here, who is here with me today, never aired because he exhibited such extreme erratic behavior, we thought, at the time, that we decided not to air the show until he got some help. And since that time, he has done so, gotten some help. Let's take a look at a clip from that show. You'll see this the first time yourself. But recently, John says he has thoughts of blowing her away. True? Uh, 
Uh, I said, yeah, just out of anger. That was all out of anger. I could never hurt no one, and I know that. She knows that. Mm -hmm. But have you had behavior that has surprised you recently? Uh, yes, yes. And yes. how have you surprised yourself? Because you've been doing some things that I am sure, John, you would have said a year ago you were incapable of doing. Oh, yeah, I uh, call on her in the middle of the night, uh, uh, f following her. Following her? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, things like that. Mm -hmm. Tell me what happened. She left you? You left Yeah, she left and filed for divorce. I haven't been served with the papers yet. So I, I think this, uh, I am changing myself. I am growing. I am nurturing. I am, uh, I'm, uh, Uh, I need a minute. Uh, Go ahead. Um, Are you getting some help? Yes. Uh, I'm going to church. But I wanted to say this. I am uh, changing my bad habits, my thoughts, my way of living. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. I'll go to break. I'll go to break. I'll go to break. Okay? We will go to break. We'll be right back. You're doing good. You're doing good. You're doing okay. You're doing good. John was saying that's hard for him to watch because it brings up all the pain that he was feeling at that particular time. And since then, he's been counseling with a minister, and you feel better about yourself? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And you've left her alone? Yes. Yeah. So what changed for you? Uh, what do you mean? What changed in terms of made, what happened with you that made you able oh, to I, be able to stop? I was driving myself crazy. I, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. I've had a a great life up to this point and uh you feeling better yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's a mountain to climb and i climbed it mm -hmm. if she don't want me back forget it mm -hmm. that's hard though you know rejection's hard for all of us all of us have been rejected haven't you audience been rejected at some point we've all been rejected and felt the pain of being rejected so you know i feel for you i i mean i understand what that feels like and all of us react in different ways when that happens. And for you, you were one of those people who was determined to get her back no matter what. You had to have her. But now you've been taking care of yourself. That's what you said yeah. to us, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm over it now. It just it hurts. It hurts. To hear it all again. You know. Yeah. When you saw yourself, as you were saying to me when that was on, uh, you saw yourself. What is the pain? I don't know. Do you want to talk about that? Uh, um, no. I... Uh, I'm emotional about it, you know. Mm -hmm. It brings back all those feelings of her not wanting you and you wanting her. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Things like that. And you trying to make it right. But I remember when you left here that day, I said what you have to do is make it right with yourself. Right, and I have. Mm -hmm. I have. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm content with whatever happens now. Uh, you know, it's... You're doing better. You got yeah, a job. Yeah, I'm doing a lot better. I'm just breaking up now because, you know, You're it's all coming it. back now. Yeah, but, I see. Uh, Actually, I'm fine, ladies and gentlemen. I'm back. <laughs> when you were here in November, John, so you have all this support. When you were here in November, did, you. did you uh, did you have a job then? No, I was laid off. Yeah. Uh, my career is great now. Yeah, I have and excellent... that's one of the things I was thinking, too, when you were sharing this with me during the break, that a lot of times, because we just did a show the other day with... Um, uh, that you all will see later on, husbands who complain all the time, and this husband was nagging his wife, nagging his wife, and he even admitted that part of it was because he's been laid off for a year, right, and right, he feels be better sitting home nagging her than, you know, facing the reality of not being able to be the provider himself. So did you think that when you lost your job, you lost a lot of esteem with that, yeah, self-esteem? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, definitely. And? And uh, I've got it back. <laughs> I've, uh, I've got a, a great job, a great career ahead of me, and my life has never been better. Yeah? So. Are you dating someone else? No. No? No. Do you think you will? Oh, yeah. Of oh, when will you take that step to move on to find someone else? Oh, I've tried a couple of times. They said no, so I'll yeah. move on. <laughs> <laughs> Keep slugging at them. Slugging at them. Yeah. And so, do you... Oh, I, you know, I, made, I said a joke to my friends. I said, you know, uh, I, I had to get out of the house. My phone keeps ringing. They says, why? I says... Phone call after phone call, women wanting to take me out. It must have been the 200 flyers I passed out. Yeah. Good joke, John. Yeah. Uh, <laughs>
So when you oh, were here, I'm, you, I'm, I'm getting you, a bumper sticker made up. It says, "Don't drink and stalk." That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you lost us on that oh, one. Ahead. You lost us on that one. So when you were here the last time, Mary, uh -huh. there was some stuff going on. Do y'all see the show that Mary was on? Oh my heavens! I told her not to come with any surprises today. So she said she has no surprises, but you not only stalked him, you actually became violent. Very violent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm not proud of it. Yeah. But, like... Did you serve time for that? Uh, 14 hours. Mm-hmm. And I'm on probation for three years. Mm-hmm. And if I mess up one time while I'm on probation, I do 3.75 years of prison time, and I'm a first-time offender. Oh. <laughs> so we're talking about getting inside the mind of somebody who does that, and one of the things that John was sharing with us is that... During that time, he was stalking his ex-wife. He didn't uh, have a job. Self-esteem was very low. By the time you get, find yourself sitting outside somebody else's house and on the hunt, on the prowl for them, mm -hmm. your self-esteem has got to be pretty bad. It hits rock bottom. Uh-huh. Uh, the only thing that the, the stalking came about was because of, I don't want to say it was because of my son. Was, I love my son very much. Mm -hmm. And I don't have custody of my son. My ex-husband has custody. And I want custody of my son. And as soon as I'm off probation, I'm going to proceed to file for custody. For your son. Right. But isn't part of it, too, one of the things you shared here? You walked in the house. You know she's there. I you, didn't know she was there, though. At the, that, that day, at you that, didn't know she right, was there. Right, exactly. But you see this other person with the person you have loved so much or been obsessed with, because I don't call this love at all. It was obsession. Yes. It's, you get an instant feeling of anger, um, betrayal, mm -hmm. that you can't understand why a friend who that's, you thought was a friend... That's what I went would, through, too. ...would uh, do something like this. Yeah, it's what? something, uh, you can't, it's, you know, stalking, you say you're stalking them. Uh, it's like, I was just watching, you know, I didn't want to hurt no one. You're curious. Exactly. When someone walks out of your life, you want to know... What know, they're doing. What they're when doing. They're it's doing just it. curiosity, it's, you know, so, you know. Come on, you want to know John, what they're doing. Come yeah. on. It's more than curiosity. Because if the person says, leave me alone, I don't want to have anything to do with you, and you continue to be curious and, and curious and going by their house and calling them up, harassing them, that is stalking. I know you may not like the word, not but that's... Not only stalking, is stupid. Yeah, stalking and stupid. You're right, right. <laughs> Coming up next, we're going to talk to Bill and his wife, who says that she feared for her life because Bill put the word out on the street that he was going to have her killed. Later in the show, we'll talk to Kathleen Kruger, the wife of a U.S. senator who was stalked.